Hey, I'm Sarah Ernie, and I'm a data scientist. We're here at San Francisco's Pier 15 at the Exploratorium. Let's go learn some science. I'm here today to help make science more accessible to you. Because after all, we're all scientists at heart, and we all have questions. Have you ever thought about what actually happens when you're typing on your phone? You actually are typing on a screen where the software understands what you're touching. And most of the time, it actually does a really good job of understanding what letters you want to hit. But sometimes, it's not quite correct. Let's say I want to type the word about. Great. Looks exactly like what I wanted it to, what I expected. It even capitalized it for me. Awesome. But a lot of the time, I don't actually do a really great job typing it out. Spout is not a dictionary word. But what happened that was really great is that it substituted it for about on my behalf because it's matching it to a word in the dictionary that is closest to the one that I typed. Actually, the word shout has just as many letter substitutions. And when you think about it, it probably would have been the one that came to mind first if you saw this written on a piece of paper. The reality is that about is actually closer to espout than shout is when we look at distance on your keyboard. That's because the letter A and S are more often clumsily substituted by your thumbs than the letters B and H, if we look at where it is on this keyboard. B and N are right next to each other. So why didn't the word snout come up? Snout's a real word, a pig snout. Well, part of that actually has to do with what goes into creating autocorrect. So the word snout actually doesn't come up that often. And the way this works is that in addition to creating distant substitutions for all of the letters, most autocorrect actually also uses a corpus or a collection of documents that it derives this type of information from. So for example, it used all of the articles in the New York Times or some other publications and use those as how likely it would be for the word snout to start off at the beginning of a sentence. In artificial intelligence, what we're trying to do is move toward a place where we all have personalized or customized autocorrect. But if we think about what's actually required to do that, the companies that are creating autocorrect would have to hold on to all of your data and all of the text that you're sending to base their probabilities of how often that word is seen based on what you have written in the past. So it comes at a trade-off between privacy and the ability to have artificial intelligence really learn about you. We actually have a lot of examples of companies that refuse to give up data about individuals, even in cases of terrorism, where companies refuse to unlock the phones of people that were suspected of shooting others. And the reason why is that those companies don't want to be the judge in deciding what data should be accessible. What happens if the request for something being okay suddenly has to do with your voting record or something else that you might have set? That's why it's important to always ask how your data is being used and why it's being stored. That's today's Science and Tech. I'm Sarah Ernie, reminding you that science is all about discovery. So go out and discover.